Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, so basically this video is about uh, Lab 6D and in this video we will go over the questions in Lab 6D. All right. So let's start with the first question. It says the code below defines a method to sum the elements of an array of int. So basically there is an uh, integer array and the, uh, a method which they're referring to this method is basically just <clears throat> finding out the sum of all the elements in the array all right and then it says we are supposed to rewrite the loop using a while loop instead of a for loop so this code basically is written using a for loop right you have to change it in a way that it works as a while loop so you have to rewrite it uh, using a while loop <clears throat> The string four must not appear anywhere in your answer, even in a comment. So the word four, you should not include it in your code, even if it is a comment, it shouldn't be there. All right. Now what I'm, what I will basically do is I'll copy this code. All right, and I'll paste it here. Now, if we look at the example, when you call this sum elements, this method basically it just returns. Uh, it just displays a result using the system out.print line, right? So it displays basically uh, the sum of all the elements in the array. So 10 plus 20 plus minus 5 plus 100. So 100, uh, this will be 30. This will be 100. So 130 minus 5, it's 125. Now, if it, now it is an, if, it, if it is an empty array, which means there's nothing inside it, then the sum should be 0. All right, the code is already given. You have to change it in a way that it works as a while loop. All right, uh, that it works for the while loop. So you have to just change um, three things. Uh, basically, you have to move the initialization. This part is the initialization of the loop, right? And then this one is the, sorry. And then this one is the condition. And then this one is the increment. And this is the block. You have to move the initialization outside the loop. All right, so that's done. Now you have to change the word for to while. Okay, the condition stays there. All right, just remove the semicolon. Okay, and then this part, the increment, you have to move it outside uh, within the loop. So this part, just move it here. All right. And don't forget the semicolon. That's how you would change a for loop into a while loop. You just move the uh, initialization out of the loop. All right. And then you just keep the condition here without any semicolon. You have you change the for uh, keyword to while. And then the increment is um, moved inside the loop with the semicolon. Now, now if I click on pre-check here, it should tell me that it should be correct, which it is. And if I click on check, there it is. So now for the second question, it says write a method. Uh, the name of it should be find first, and then it should take an integer array called vector, and also another um, uh, parameter of type int as value. What you're supposed to basically do is return the index of the first occurrence of value in the array vector. If you don't find this value, then you just return minus one otherwise. And these are the basic requirements that your code should abide by. Now, basically what is happening, if you see that the, if you see here, it's an array with multiple values, multiple int values, all right? And then there's uh, the value 30 being passed to the method first, uh, find first. You're supposed to figure out which is the first index where 30 occurs in this uh, array? So here, 30 is in two places, right here and then at the end. You're supposed to find out the first index where it occurs. So the first index would be 0, 1, and then 2. That's the first place where 30 is occur occurring in the, uh, in the array, right? So the result would be 2. Now, if uh let's look at the second example we're looking for the value 40 within this array and if we 
check where we find it. It's at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's at the fourth index, and that's basically the result. In this case, there's a value 60 being passed to the method find first. Here, if we look at the values, we don't have 60 in the array at all, right? So in this case, uh, if you do not find the value 60 within, oh, not 60, any value, if you don't find it within the array, in this method, it should return minus 1, all right? Now, we know we're returning something because it says you're supposed to return. And if we look at the uh, code that is already given to us, there's an int return type as well. All right. Now, if I try to write this, I would write it in this way. I will find out, I'll create a variable to keep track of the first occurrence um, with the, of the value within the array. All right. And I'll give it a value of minus one, because if we don't find it and uh, and in the beginning, when the program reaches this line, we've not even start. Uh, we, we did not even start looking for it. So by default, we're assuming that we have not found it. In that case, the value should be minus one, right? So that's the reason I've given it uh, minus one. Not found yet. Now, another variable that I would create basically is for index of the array to, to you know, move uh, each in, from one index to another while we're looping. So for that, I will create, I've created the index variable. Now I'll use the while loop in this case, any loop is fine. You can write it with for loop, you can write it with do while loop, just make sure that it works in all situations. Now, in this case, like every other <coughs> array loop condition, I will have index should be less than the array we have here, which is vector. So vector dot length. So your index should be less than vector dot length. Um, if the the current index that we're looking at, which is vector of index, <coughs> vector of index, if that the value there is equal to the value that is being passed to the method, then we're supposed to change. Uh, we're supposed to change the occurrence basically to the current index all right and then we will also break now what is break break is just leave the loop all right break means just exit the loop uh, exit whatever you are currently in so we're currently in the loop right so exit that loop um, and don't forget the index plus plus all right now finally we're supposed to return uh, the occurrence right how many times it has occurred so we will write return occurrence now here if uh, we've never found it occurrence would never change it will still be minus one so in that case you will have returned minus one but if it has found it somewhere it will store that index in the occurrence variable and then it will break from the loop it means exit the loop and then it will come to this statement and return the value if we click on pre-check that's correct and if we click on check That's correct too. So that's your question two for lab 6D. Now moving on to question three, let's see how that is supposed to be done. Now here it says that you're supposed to write a method longest string that takes as input an array of strings and returns the longest string. We know the name of the method is longest string. All right. And because it's a method, you need these two brackets. Now, we also know it's returning something. It's returning the longest string. And if we look at the result, it is basically when we're calling, uh, there's a word is, and then we're calling longest string. If we look here, after is, we have a, we have some text. So that means it's a string, we're returning a string, right? So we would just write public static before it because that's 
supposed to be written before every method. If it's not given uh, in the method, don't worry about it. But if you're supposed to write the method, then uh, make sure you have that public static. And then because we're returning a text, the return, uh, the return type will be string. Now, it's, it also says that it takes as input an array of strings. That means it's taking a parameter when it's when the question or the statement says takes that literally means it's a parameter all right so it would take a parameter and if even if you look here it's taking something as parameter and if, if we look what is words it is basically a string array so that i can use i can just write it that way string array of words you can name it whatever you want but the uh, type should be same all right so that's how you create uh, the method signature and body basically just write the name of the method all right whatever it is returning if it's if the statement doesn't say anything about return just keep this uh, word void make sure you have public static and then if it says uh, that the method is taking something as a parameter or it takes something then it means it's basically taking a parameter and it should be written this way the data type and then the name that you want to give it now how can we figure out which among so basically what you're supposed to do the, there's a, an array of names being or words being given to you all right you have to figure out which is the largest word in, among all of them and that word you're supposed to return all right in this case i will create <clears throat> uh, an integer variable called longest long guest index and i will give it a value of zero all right and then i'll again create another uh, int variable i will name it index for looping through the array all right and then i'll start a while loop i'll check while index is still less than uh array what's the name of the array words dot length all right if it is still less than words dot length i will check if um words of longest index is less than or you know we can write it in this way words of index basically is greater than word words of longest index now there's one thing missing there's a hint that says remember that s dot length whatever the string is if there's a string called s then s dot length will return the length for you which means if uh, there was a string it6008 it will give uh, s dot length will give you the uh, length of the string so it means how many characters are there so one two three four five six so this will s dot length here will return six for you now keeping that in mind we're checking for the length we're checking if the word that we're currently checking in the array if the length of that word basically is greater than the length of the uh, the index that we're tracking for the longest uh, word all right initially it is zero so it will check if the word uh, words of index dot length is greater than words of index which the long words of longest index which is at the moment zero is it greater or not if it is if if this length if the current length basically is greater then we should change the index change the longest index right so the longest index will now become the current index right and then finally outside the if statement don't forget to increment the index now here uh, we are supposed to return the name we're not supposed to return the index so what you can do basically at the end just write return words of longest index okay so basically what what is happening you're checking if the current word that you're looking in the array the length of it is it greater than the longest length that you have tracked uh if if so whatever that index is uh the the value at that index is it 
uh, is, is the length of that word less than or greater than uh, the one you're just looking at for instance let's say uh, at the moment the one the longest word that we have encountered basically is philip all right now the next word here is osama right the this this uh, if statement will check if osama if the word osama or the name osama is it greater is the length of it greater than the already uh, stored longest index length which means if if we look if we count the characters this word basically is shorter than this one right so this statement will not be executed but when you reach this word instead of osama this is longer than philip right so in this case what is going to happen the index whatever that index is will be stored in the longest index and then uh, that you can track that that particular index has the longest word all right now if i click on pre-check here it says it's correct okay and then if i click on check that's correct also so that's how you would do the third question now for the fourth one it says write a method decompose that takes as input a string and returns the array of characters that compose the string now here um we're supposed to write decompose. Uh, I think the the name is wrong because here it says decompose string. So I'll be using decompose uh, string for this question. I would write it this way. So they say the name of the method should be decompose. So don't forget public static. And the name is decompose string. I'm, I'm just using this name here, which is in the test. All right, now it says it takes input a string. So that means there's a string parameter, let's call it word, all right. And then it also says that there is a return uh, and it returns the array of characters that compose the string. So car, car basically is the uh, data type for characters, right? So an array of car would be written this way, car and then the array brackets. Now here, uh, they've given you the hint that s dot card at i returns the character at position i should have been written as index index i of the string s so here what you can do basically is write um create a car <clears throat> uh, array character array name it words or anything you want to name it and then new car array we know the length of this basically what is happening here is you have a word philip all right it is a string when you pass it to this method it should return an array with each character as a separate value in the array all right that is what's happening so basically the the size of the array will be the same as the the word or the text that is being sent so you can use word dot length for uh, the size of the array all right now for int index is equal to zero index is less than uh, you can write words dot length and then plus plus index that is how you write a for loop you have an initialization with index zero that represents the zero index of the array and then uh, your uh, array should not go out of bound which means uh, your array index should if the array is of as in if the array has 10 um, as the size you should not go beyond that you should not go to the 11th position all right and then don't forget the increment and all you have to do is words of index should be word dot r at index so you're saying 
at this position of the array, take the character at that specified position and save it within the array. So if it has if it is at the zero index, in this case it would be p because p uh, is the character at the zero index and it will be stored at the zero um, index of the array. And when you move to the next index, h will be stored at the at the first index of the array. I will be stored at the third. L will be st stored at the fourth, and so on and so forth until you reach the end of the string. All right. And then finally, you have to return the words array. All right. So let's click on pre-check and then check again. And that's basically how you do it. So you you just take the word, you find its length using dot length, you create an array with that specified length, create a character array because it's specified here as characters. Using a for loop, you write the you, you start with in, in int index is equal to zero. So you start at the zero index and then until the length of the array. And one by one you peek. You pick each character and you store it in the array. Finally, you just return the array. All right. Now, moving to the fifth question. It says, write uh, a method occurrences that finds the number of occurrences of the integer specified as the first parameter in the array of integers that is specified as the second parameter. So if we look here, basically there's an array <clears throat> of integers, all right, and then there's another integer two here. We have to find how many times is the value or number two uh, present in the array that is given here. So you're just supposed to I, I think it doesn't mention here the return, but I think you're supposed to return here because when you're calling the method here, it's basically printing the number of times it uh, should show. So that needs to be fixed. It should tell you that um, you're supposed to return also. But sometimes the question doesn't say. So you should look at the test and see if uh, basically this method or whatever you're writing, is it returning something or not? All right, so here I would write it this way. Uh, okay, uh, let's look at the second question. Uh, sorry, second example before we write the code. Here we're looking at the value one in this array. One is being repeated twice, right? So when you call it here, after the word occurs, it should print two. So one, basically the value is occurs twice or two times in the array. So basically, how, how do we write this method you're supposed to always have public static now the return type the return type should be uh, let's say in this case an integer because it's returning numbers right one two five so here i would write int and then uh, you're supposed to write the name of the method and if we notice here, the first num the first value it is taking is nb. nb basically is an int, right? So I would write int number. And then also it's taking numbers as the second parameter, which is basically an int array. So I would write int array numbers, right? And then here within this method, uh, we're supposed to check we're supposed to find how many times the number is being repeated. So I will create a variable for it and I will name it count to track how many times it has been repeated. And then um, again, <clears throat> for int index is equal to zero. Index should be less than uh, numbers dot length and then plus plus index. And so this is basically the loop for your array because you have the numbers dot length here, which represents that your index or your looping should not go beyond the 
the size of the array. So here I'll check if numbers of index is equal to equal to number. All right. So if numbers of index is basically equal to equal to number, which is this value, if the current number that you're looking at in the array, is it, if it is the same as the number being passed to the method, then you're supposed to increment your count. All right. And then don't, uh, oh, because this is a for loop, you do not need to increment within the loop. So this is what happens. And finally, you just return count. So it will check. If at the first index, um, your oh sorry, if at the sec if at the zero index, the value that you're looking at is it the same as the value passed to the method? If so, then it will increment the count to one. The next time when you find a value similar to number, it will increment count. So how many ever values you find, that many times count will be incremented by one. And finally, you just return count. So let's click on pre-check. And that's how you would do this. I think this lab is fairly easier than the other labs. Um, but I, th I think uh, when you practice, it will become all the other labs will also become easier. Now, moving on to the next question. Uh, it says write a method average that takes as input a variable number of integers. It's not ve very clearly Stated. So let's look at the example. Here we see there's an integer array called numbers. And when you're calling the average, you're actually passing the numbers array. Okay, uh, it should have been written input a variable, input an array of a number, something like that. But it should have mentioned array. But anyways, if, if the question is not clear, always look at the test and the example. It also mentions that the method should return the average of the integers as a double. So basically, we need to return it as a double. So public static, the return is as a double. So double, the name is average, and it's taking input as integer array called numbers. Okay, now here, <coughs> you're supposed to, whatever numbers are being passed to you, you're supposed to calculate the average of it and print uh, and return that average. Now, in order to find the average, the first thing you do is you add all the numbers, all right? So you take the sum of all the numbers and you divide uh, that number with how many ever numbers were there, which means in this case, there are five numbers. You're going to add all these five numbers and divide it by five. If there were six numbers, you would add all those six numbers and divide by six. All right. So in this case, um, it should give you, uh, it should return a double uh, as average. So if we try to code this, the first thing you need to keep track of is the sum or the total, whatever you want to name it. And then for int index is equal to zero. Usually if all the loops are uh, with arrays are written almost the same way. So if you kind of memorize, if you're trying to memorize it, it will also become easy if you're finding it a bit difficult to remember. So index, uh, the next thing is index should be less than numbers, this array dot length. And then don't forget the plus plus index. And then you will have sum is equal to sum plus numbers of index. So whatever that number is, you add it to the sum that you're keeping track of. Sum is zero initially. So zero plus, in this case, one will give you one. Next time, zero, uh, next time sum is one, right? So one plus uh, two will give you three and so on and so forth. All right, and finally, you have to return the sum divided by how many num how many numbers were there. So numbers dot length. Now the problem is sum is an integer and numbers dot length will also give you an integer, right? But you're supposed to return a double. So what you do is you cast it. You you make one of the uh, values double and 
that will return for you um, the the value or the result in a double format. So if I click on pre-check now, it's correct. And finally check. That's also correct. So that's your lab 6D. All right.